So this is the motor from the potter's wheel. What we're going to do with it really is take it apart and have a look, see if we can salvage it, because it is pretty rusty, but we might be lucky. So let's take it to pieces. So here's the wiring box. You can see this wire here, whether there, that is the start capacitor, and it goes to that one and that one. This wire here, that's the input. So that's where the power comes from, and it goes to that one and that one. You notice the blue, which is the neutral, is joined to the brown, the start capacitor. These are the motor wires, the red, yellow, and black, and you can see that the red goes there, the black goes there. The yellow, we can't see that, but it's probably behind here on the other, on the other side of the start capacitor. Okay, so all I've done is disassemble it, evict the biggest and fattest of the spiders, and give it a brush down to get rid of the rust, and that's what we've got. Now, it is a third of a horsepower induction motor for a 230 volt supply. So, there's the rotor, as you can see. No coils, no brushes. That's awesome, actually. These induction motors basically last forever because there's nothing to wear out in terms of commutation. Here is the field coils. I've checked those for continuity. They look in good condition. So, I'm thinking of just putting this back together. So, we'll do a clean up, maybe give it a coat of paint put it back together and get some voltage in there and see if that bad boy spins. Okay, so there's the motor all cleaned and put back together. Now remember, it is an old motor, and there's a thing I'd like to point out to you. At the back here, I've removed this cover plate because these don't actually have bearings in them. They've got bushings. And the bushings have a couple of felts in there. You have to remember to oil those felts or the thing won't turn. Obviously, when we got it out of the potter's wheel, it wasn't turning either. Now it's nice and turning freely. I've replaced a couple of the cables, incidentally, uh, and that's the motor ready to go. So clearly, the only thing to do is to see if it actually works. So rather than wander off, turn it on and wander back, I've asked Luke to help me, so I go through the switch. <laughs> yes! <laughs> My creature, she lives! <laughs> That's actually awesome! Would you mind, Matt? Of course. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, fantastic. We took that scrappy 10 year old motor that was completely rusty, refurbished it, and we now have a working motor. Refurbishment's a real common approach to motors. These induction motors, remember, have no brushes. But there's very little that can wear out. We're kind of lucky that the bushings aren't worn, so we didn't have to replace the bushings. These days you might replace it with bearings. But there's very little wear on these things. They're extremely expensive in terms of their engineering, and when you buy a new alternator for your car, nine times out of ten it's just a refurbished alternator. The same with the starter motor. So refurbishing motors actually is a matter really of cleaning them, oiling them, getting rid of the rust, putting a coat of paint, and you will have yourself what is effectively a brand new motor for an hour or two's work. Anyway, time to put this back in the potter's wheel. I thought I'd share that with you as a separate video because I thought it was worth it. And thank you very much for watching.